I hope everybody had a good break. The next session is about user experience. As we were selecting um, tracks for, the, for the, this conference, we want to look more deeply at user experience than many of us in the room uh, focus on, beyond the screens, really at the human side of user experience. We have for you now two anthropologists, Yong Hee Jung from Nokia, Genevieve Bell from Intel, and Paul Durish at University of California, Irvine. They're going to talk about the work that they've done analyzing, studying, how do people behave, how are people working, how do people live, and then what are the implications for design. First speaker is Yongi Jung. She's an exploratory design researcher, and she also leads a multidisciplinary research team at Nokia, spread across three continents, um, the Insight and Innovation team for Nokia. She's been working for Nokia since 2000, and she currently lives and works in Tokyo. And her education was uh, as a product and interaction designer, so she has a, a, a significant design background, and she's doing a lot of research now. And for most of the projects of her team, they're focusing on people's everyday lives and what are the implications for Nokia. And they've recently started projects where they're asking people, normal people, to come in and they design their future technology. They specify what they want. And they start talking about how is this technology relevant for their own lives. Please help me welcome Young Hee Young to the stage. Hello, um, my name is Young Hee, and I've been working for the company that manufactures mainly mobile phones for a very long time. Um, well, we, do, we did talk about telecommunications future, but um, telecommunications has been around literally more than a century, and mobile communications have been around long enough so that we stop asking each other or explaining to each other what it is anymore. Today, I would like to invite you to um, put on a designer's hat just for a little while. So this is a picture of an Indian girl who puts her mobile phone on the altar in her house because that's the only space in her house that's not wiped with water. Um, the mobile phone is the only electronics in her house, and um, she records TV or radios from outside with her phone so that she can replay them at home. So she wants to learn to speak English to get a better paid job. So what would you design for her? Will you focus on the short-term problems um, or for her better future? What more information would you like to have to make that uh, decision? So well, about um, 3 billion out of 6.5 billion people on this planet last year were using mobile phones. And that's um, billions of mobile phones uh, used by individuals with different dreams, lifestyle, tastes. Um, and those billions of phones inherently influence the idea of what we consider as social norms, the way we communicate with each other, do business, and um, perhaps manage our memories or whatnot. And there will be those who will get a new mobile phone for the first time in the next few years, mostly from countries with fast social economic changes like uh, Indonesia, China, and Brazil. And that's why we cannot stop asking ourselves what a mobile phone is to various people and what it will be in the future. I work for Nokia Design in a team, as Steve explained, in a team that specializes exploratory design research. In our work, we focus on personal and social aspect of mobile technology. Um, and for that, we constantly need to learn from people. And, and it's not only to support design decisions we make, but also to inspire new or challenging existing uh, thinking. So what does it mean to work with people? Sometimes it means that we visit someone's house at 3 AM, or ending up in someone's bed, or following someone with a big camera like a stalker. Or sometimes it means that we invite people to uh, more organized events like a workshop so that they can express their, their ideas better or share opinions or create something totally new. Naturally, we, uh, we are constantly on the lookout to find better ways to work with people and learn from them. And last year, uh, we embarked on a new project uh, in Mumbai, Rio, and Accra, specifically to understand people living in, uh, well, self garment communities, so-called shanty towns. 
And there are a number of people and local organizations that made this work possible, and we are merely a facilitator. And for, as a part of this research project, we um, ran a design competition, so to speak, which we named Nokia Open Studio. And it was our very first time to try this. And uh, today I would like to share how we did it and what we learned, what we think we learned from it. So what does it take to host a design competition? Well, first, we hosted it in three different communities. Uh, Darabi in Mumbai, which is about 100 inhabitants, and Favela Zakarzinho, located in the northern parts of Rio, and Buduburam, which is a 17-year-old Liberian refugee camp set uh, about 30 kilometers east of Accra, the capital of Ghana. And for each location, we recruited a local team comprised of those who understand the local culture fairly well, and as many as possible people who are from that community itself. We hope that the event could be run and enjoyed by the community itself and minimize our corporate presence there. So the Mumbai team came, came up with a slogan, design a phone and get a phone. And despite the harsh rainy season, uh, you can see the like, wet t-shirt uh, that the girl is wearing. The team uh, went around in all parts of Darabi and handed out the information. And a photo studio in the community was hired to uh, act as a studio space. In Zakarzinho, the team came up with a slogan which translates in English as, it's about time to design your cell phone. My computer is quite slow. And the team also composed a funk song about the Open Studio, and it was broadcasted through the local radio station. And the team wore these uh, T-shirts, specifically designed for, for the project, not only to promote the, uh, the event, but also as a kind of security measure to work in the community. Both the T-shirt and the backdrop and everything was designed by the local graffiti artist. In Buduburam, the um, team came up with a slogan. <laughs> so, time to change the new computer. <laughs> so they came up with a slogan that your uh, create your. Your dream phone, share it with the world, was their slogan. And um, the NGOs are sp called Mopgel, which, uses, um, which usually give out computer courses what used, was used as a studio space. So, um, uh, well, basically good local teams were what it took for us to uh, host community design competition, and we were all very impressed at the local teams uh, and their efforts and enthusiasm they put in this. And uh, despite all the challenges that they had, to mention a few challenges that they experienced, Mumbai had its rainy season, so streets were often flooded with rainfalls and sewage water coming out of the ground. And um, Favela Zacarzinho is often considered off-limits for outsiders because of uh, uh, frequent gun, gunfire, crossfires between the local gangs and the police. And uh, in Buduburam, uh, there is no constant electricity supply, so the studio was only able to run during the daylight. So we scheduled the competition to run for two weeks, uh, but Mumbai and Rio were cut slightly shorter because of the weather condition and uh, police confrontations. So he, this is what it um, looked like, so the process. Well, of course, we have to have an entry form, and um, it, was, uh, it listed the questions so that uh, participants can elaborate on their ideas a bit more in detail. And considering all the logistics involved, we, could, we had to make one sheet of A3 paper to contain everything we needed. So when a participant came to the studio, they were given this entry form and drawing tools. Most, most participants came with sketches um, and notes that they worked on at home. 
In Mumbai, because of high illiteracy rate in the community, the local team had to be always ready to fill in the forms for the entrance. And in Rio, it was very common for uh, participants to bring their family members, so it became a bit more like a group work. And sometimes uh, children brought their parents to submit their own ideas. To, in order to complete the submission, the entrant uh, was interviewed by the team. And this short interview was intended for us to uh, understand how the entrant's idea is re related to their actual personal situation, not just a mere list of functions. And then it was time for a photo shoot uh, with a submission, and everyone was given a printout as a souvenir. We heard that several people have to go home to change into nicer clothes and come back for the photo into the studio. So after all this, it was time for us to, um, for the local team and uh, Nokia team to get together and select the winners. For us, this was an amazingly uh, good learning experience as the local team explained not only the entries but in the context of their local knowledge. Then the team organized an award ceremony. One of us always had to function as a token outsider and a Nokia representative to give the award. And uh, several winners came with uh, their own, the whole family, and it became kind of big local buzz in the community. And thankfully, uh, to our honor, all communities actually, um, we, we heard comments like, uh, they felt a little bit proud because we were, they were asked to tell us what they think, not us trying to sell them something. So here are finally some winners um, uh, that we chose. And most winners were probably chosen because they touched on issues that our local teams felt important for the community. So the first idea was um, done by a lady, 20-year-old student. She wanted a phone where, which she can simply point at the sky to check the weather, to decide whether she could stay at home or not. And um, the, this entry caused a lot of debate in the local team in Mumbai because uh, a lot of people argued that this is not, nothing new, nothing inventive. But the winning argument finally was that um, well, partly it's done by a woman entrant, which was very rare in Mumbai, and its intuitive use was good for those without technical knowledge or even illiterate. And on the high number of weather-dependent jobs in the community. And indeed, in, in, in that community, uh, there were many houses that are so small indeed that most of housework, like laundry or dishwashing, had to be done outside of home. And the lack of information sources such as TV, radio, or newspaper, which we all take for granted, was not very common there. So it was really difficult to get weather forecasts for a normal housewife or a woman staying at home. The next winner from Rio is um, the done by uh, Roberto, father of two, and is very religious. And he thinks that the community is going through uh, very serious ecological problems because Nobody cares. And this was a phone that measured air pollution and monitored ozone layer um, in the sky so that people are more aware of the environmental problems in the community. Um, and it has solar charging battery. So the, this idea was voted unanimously among the Rio team absolutely the best. And indeed, um, all three communities had self-built sewage system. As more and more people are moving into the city, as the city expands, uh, the pollution is becoming very problematic and sometimes dangerous for children. But most people are not really ready for systematic solutions. And this one is from uh, Budaburam and uh, done by Yeke, 21-year-old uh, student. And he wants this phone to be able to host up to four separate SIM cards because four operators in Ghana all offer cheaper cores within their own network. He also adds that it will be waterproof, PlayStation, and cable TV at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so using more than one SIM card is a very common phenomenon in Accra. Uh, often people either use multiple phones or carry the extra SIM cards and switch between them. We also found a more advanced solution, which is an operation to combine two SIM cards into one, 
but the, it was quite pricey at about 15 euros. So uh, they were the winner entries. But after getting all these entries, we noticed that uh, there are a few distinctive aspects emerged in each of the communities that the jurors probably didn't see. Um, so I would like to walk you through those with a few examples selected from each communities. So let's start with Mumbai. Um, this is done by a 26-year-old working at a tea stall. He wants a loudspeaker on the phone so that he can make announcements at fairs and religious festivals. Several entries from Daurabi really featured sharing of media with family or friends using the phone. And uh, mango and heart-shaped phones. Um, this Muslim lady chose the heart because it's a symbol of love. And she said her husband recently started to show a lot of affection towards her. And her house had no electricity, yet we knew that she made a lot of practice drawings under the streetlight before she came to the studio. And on a side note, we wanted to interview her um, more in depth, but house, her house was flooded, so she had to move to a relative's house. And we also heard from the neighbor that her husband was still cheating on her. So it broke our heart. Um, and another reason for choosing the heart, uh, done by this 22-year-old labor worker, he chose the heart shape because you always keep the mobile phone close to the heart. So we saw um, a lot of these ideas, which is um, having a very symbolic meaning to the shape um, from India. Another idea, done by a 38-year-old guy, um, the bottle-shaped phone will store water as well as float in the water in case the, the neighborhood is flooded. So this will help him and other people in emergencies. And that's what he wants from a mobile phone, um, allowing him to help other people. And uh, the last idea was a 23-year-old painter. And um, he wants a mobile phone that would never fall from hand. And even if it falls, the durable material will make it unbreakable. He says living in a crowded Dawrabi increases the chance of dropping the phone. And unbreakable, durable, and waterproof and whatnot, uh, those ideas were re wished by so many uh, people uh, who participate in the competition. And people typically keep the mobile phones for a long time in this community. Uh, and it was not uncommon to see the keypad uh, printout totally worn off by use. The next community is um, Zacarzinho, the favela in Rio. And uh, we realized that people tended to uh, be very much aware of the community's problems. And he was also first winner as well. And he's a 19-year-old student and a social worker who wants to change the world, especially by leading young people to the right direction. And therefore, with that inspiration, he came up with this idea, which is all entertainment systems in one device, including a virtual blown psychologist wearing a bikini who can answer any doubts and keeps people updated about cultural events in town. Um, and uh, this is done by a mother of three, but she goes to high school during the day and to become a hairdresser at night. Because she's away uh, from home uh, so long every day, her bossy 11-year-old daughter wants a phone to monitor her mother so that she can check where she is and whom she is with. So, and the teenage pregnancy rate is very high in favelas, and many young mothers leave their children at home for uh, their work or study. And uh, this lady is a 23-year-old uh, hip-hop dance teacher who wants to eliminate violence and fights from the world, like crossfires in Rio and the war in Iraq. Her mobile phone will emit the peace sound waves, which can finish any state of violence in the world. And she will use it if she gets caught in the middle of a shooting. The last community, the Buduburam, we had about 140 entries. So many entries reflected the refugees' concerns really directly, like um, having a mine arms suicide bombers detector. And we didn't include that in the example today. 
The first one that I would like to show is uh, done by an 18-year-old student who wants to go back to his uh, native village in Liberia with a phone that works with the solar energy and translates languages for people. Uh, his war-stricken home village does not have electricity and has never heard of internet. So there is no reliable electricity supply at the camp either. And people have to go to a charging station and pay per charging. In almost all entries, uh, including this one, solar charging was wanted because they don't want to spend extra money when the sun is around all the time. This is an 18-year-old student uh, who wants the phone to double function as a pen drive. And many people in the camp do not own any electronic device. And uh, they, want to, they have to rely on pen drives or other storage medium to save their personal data from PC that they use in internet cafes. This is a 24-year-old student um, and who has been in the camp for four years, and he shares his mobile phone with his brother and a friend because they cannot afford more phones. And he wants um, to keep a lot of pictures of their life, refugee life for friends and family back home in Liberia. And one day, he wants to show them to his children. So he wants uh, two removable cameras to make it easier to share the phone with his brother and friend. This is an 18-year-old girl who came to the camp when she was only one year old, and she doesn't remember her parents. Her family are supposed to live in a small village in Liberia, which doesn't have postal service. So she thought, uh, if she can uh, see the receiver's picture on the phone, when the phone call comes in, she can uh, get to know their, her parents better. This is an 18-year-old student, um, and she wants the location of the caller or receiver shown on the phone automatically, so that the receiver cannot lie about his or her location. He's only 18, but he will use it when he gets married to locate his wife, whether she's in bed with another man or not. And possibly because of unstable life situation, we saw several entries wish the phone to prevent people from lying. And uh, this classic 192 has two screens that display international and local incoming calls separately. And many refugees, we really wondered why they wanted a separate screen for these. And we found out that many refugees depend on relatives living abroad to send them money. So therefore, they were very keen on not missing important calls from overseas. The last one I would like to show is us. Well, we saw so several entries somehow created the phone to be used by people of important professions that they admired. So this is done by a 27-year-old artist designed uh, this for a high-profile businessman who travels to a remote area with no electricity. But with this, he can keep in touch with what is happening around the world, even in that remote locations. And it seems that the global awareness and the connectivity is, without having to go to an internet cafe, is something viewed by the locals very cool and desirable. And I promise that was the last drawing I show uh, today. And can you probably think about my question in the beginning, about what would you design for an Indian girl that I showed in the beginning? And you're probably wondering why we did this and what we learned. And today I would like to give you more room to think about what you have, if you were in our position, what you would have done and what you would have learned. Well, being in a corporate design and team environment, we work with uh, several challenges when it comes to learning from the real world. And probably the biggest one is the time limit. And probably two weeks is, well, on average, about the longest time we would spend on the field. But what can you learn in two weeks in a place that you have never been and furthermore, you don't speak the local language of? We devised and tried many methods to maximize our time on the ground. And uh, we intended the Open Studio to be our third main activity on the field, especially, particularly for this study, complementing well, other research, better known research methods. And we will hope that it will bring fresh aspects of design inspirations by turning people's attention totally around on the future and on the personal and on the community and on the ideal rather than the present. 
And the design competition allowed participants to focus very much on seeking the relevance of technology to their lives, which is normally our job to do in other uh, type of user research. Entries let us see the uh, very subjective perceived value of technology um, stated by the participants. You know, um, your teddy bear, precious teddy bear, can be a garbage by your parents. So, um, and by, by that statement made by, my, by the participants, we could cross-reference with our other research findings from the same community. In fact, we do wonder whether uh, it would be wiser to ask participants to design something else other than a mobile phone in the future. And we probably won't have, um, well, bottle-shaped phones or um, phones that um, feature uh, psychologists in bikinis in the near future, uh, or, or at least I cannot promise that, but the spectrum in, of insights in the open studio will certainly um, highlight issues that we tend to neglect or have not been aware of before in the company. And sorry for being over time. <laughs> Thank you.